62 games played in 31 of those games the team has scored two runs or less do you think that's what the tigers need right now an angry troll to rip their asses talking to uh, jim leland the former manager of the detroit tigers uh, let's bring him in the former manager of the detroit tigers current special advisor uh, special assistant to uh, uh, the detroit tigers jim leland how you doing jim Guys, I'm doing all right. How are you? Doing fantastic. Doing fantastic. Jim, first off, you were in town at the at the park over the weekend. Our, our, everybody loves you. I mean, when they see you, Jim, uh, Tigers fans love you. Uh, what 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 do you feel about the fan base here? What are your thoughts on the fans and just being so beloved by the organization? Well, yeah, I don't know if they all love me, but I, I do <laughs> think that I, I, I had a good rapport with the fans. But you got to remember, the players pretty much played good the entire eight years I was there. Not, you know, not every single year, but pretty much every single year. We we went to the postseason a couple times, a couple World Series. A lot of them disappointed, obviously, like us, that we didn't get that final straw. But I, I don't know. I felt like I had a pretty good rapport with them. I, I you know, I, I responded to people. I wasn't afraid to talk to people. I wasn't afraid to you know, tell them that, hey, I messed up, or this is why I did something. You can agree or disagree with it, but I'm not going to argue with you about it. You want to know why I did something, bun it or did whatever I did. I'll tell you why I did it, and then you can make your own judgment, but I'm not going to argue with you. And I think people appreciated that. You try to reach out to the fans, and I think on my radio show, I always try to reach out to the fans, and I, I try to let them know as much as I could possibly let them know, uh, you know, so that I, I think it's important for your fans to feel part of it. I think it, it's, uh, when you reach out to them and they reach out to you a little bit, I think they actually feel part of the ball club, and I think that's very healthy. So uh, I loved it there. I, I enjoyed it very much, and, of course, I still enjoy working for the organization. J Jim, uh, and the Chicago White Sox were just here. And uh, just looking at Tony La Russa in the other dugout, uh, he's 77, you're 77. Do you miss it? Do you, do you miss any part of the day-to-day -day grind, uh, being in the clubhouse, uh, anything to do with managing? Yeah, I, I miss the competition. I miss the players. I don't miss, uh, you know, all this travel and all that type of stuff. But, uh, yeah, I, I certainly miss that part. Uh, you know, there's some of the other stuff, you know, getting there at noon and, you know, not getting out of there till midnight every day and then, you know, getting in places that, four o'clock in the morning playing the next day you know i don't know that i could do that anymore i actually feel like you know i could step in a dugout and manage a game today i don't think i'd have any problem with that but whether it was good or bad i think i could manage the game but uh all the other stuff that goes with it but i i miss the players and i miss the competition but that's pretty much it and Jim, thanks for joining us. Uh, my name's Stick. Been a huge fan of yours. Uh, I was talking before you got on just how I love the old school baseball mentality uh, that you had with this team and the toughness that you brought with them. And obviously with the position that the Tigers are in right now, kind of similar to when you got brought into the organization for the first time. What, what do they got to do? What's the first step that they need to tackle to get out of this slump? Well, you know, I... I... I think some of it's a little misleading. I think that they did a lot of stuff to get out of this slump when they in the off season. They went out and got the players who wanted. Uh, Chris Illich spent three hundred million dollars. You know, it kind of irritates me when they get on Chris Illich and Al Avila. They went out and got the players they wanted. Chris Illich spent three hundred million dollars. We got a great manager, and you know, right now for whatever reason, things just haven't. You know, some of the guys we got and some of the guys we had, they got pretty good uh, backs on their bubblegum card. You know, they're pretty good statistics have over their career. For whatever reason, just to have not performed up to their capability. And uh, I think they will. I, I certainly like the players that we have. Uh, I think they will. But up to this point, uh, you know, you're seeing, you're seeing a lot of downside from guys that uh, have done very, very well in the past. Gross was good last year. Baez is a, is a great player, great talent. Uh, Scope, you know, Candelaria, uh, Meadows, you could go on and on and on. I mean, you know, Meadows and Grossman don't have a home run. I mean, you know, I understand it's not that easy, but, and, and that's not being critical. That's just pointing out that, you know, we, we figured it, uh, obviously a little bit better than that. So I think, um, I think when those guys start performing the way they're capable, I think we're fine. Uh, you know, we got a little unfortunate thing with Rodriguez who's missed some time now. We've had a couple of injuries, but everybody's had injuries. I think yesterday, I think A.J. 
probably by his own admission was was embarrassed. You know, to have to pitch a position player, you know, three innings, I think is a little much. Uh, you know, one inning from time to time, you kind of get a kick out of you move to the next day. And I certainly understood why AJ did it. He's, he's trying to, you know, if he's got a chance to win the game tonight, he's got to have his relievers ready. But you know, I think he was probably embarrassed about that. So I think that we we really did kind of get the players that the organization wanted. And, uh, you know, I think A.J. and the coaches and the scouts and myself, we got guys that uh, that we wanted, and, and Chris certainly spent the, the money and opened up the pocketbook. We just haven't performed. And uh, I, I think we will. I'll be shocked if we don't. But I know that uh, I know that A.J. is probably very disappointed right now, and rightfully so, and he's probably scratching his head as to, hey, I, you know, I, just, I guess i got to push some different – Talking to uh, Jim Leland, the former manager of the Detroit Tigers. Uh, Jim, just talking about this team right now in, in the offense. Uh, I went back this morning and looked at some numbers. 62 games played in 31 of those games. The team has scored two runs or less. I mean, it seems like when it's going bad, it's really going bad. What do you say to the guys as a manager? Uh, how, how do you get just one guy to, to string a couple of good days together? Well, you just, you know, you just got to, you know, stay out of about grinding it out and, and you know, it, and you turn it around. You don't, there's no tricks to it. There's no secrets. It's, it's just, uh, you know, working hard plus working smart. You know, I think you got to, you got to do both. You can work hard, but if you don't work smart, you don't accomplish stuff. If you work smart, but you don't work hard, you don't accomplish stuff. So I think, I'm sure they're working. I don't think there's any question about that. We just, like I said, so far, we just, uh, we just haven't. We just haven't hit on uh, those guys that we expect to do better than they've done. They're very talented. They've shown it in the past. So you have to expect that's going to, you know, that's going to happen. Like, you know, the other day, I think it's, it upsets me a little bit that people are on Al Avila so bad. I think it's unfair. And the reason I say that is the guy, I was listening to it on the way home from the game the other day, and I left a little early to get back to Ohio. And the guy came on and said, yeah, they, it was Avila. They didn't get out. They was. They wanted Correa. They didn't get Correa. I, the guy didn't have his facts straight. They offered Correa a huge contract, huge contract, like in the neighborhood of $270, $280 million. He turned it down. So I think you, you need to you know, get the facts straight before you just throw it out there and criticize. I, I, I feel bad for I mean, Al hasn't done everything right. I didn't do everything right when I was there. I'm sure AJ hasn't done everything perfect since he's been there, but – at the same time, I just think that's unfair criticism on Al Avila. I just, you know, they went out and made a big push for Correa. He chose not to take with a long, long-term contract with us. So, you know, I think you gotta you got to look into it a little bit more before you just start criticizing. Jim, whether it's the fans or radio hosts or TV hosts or newspaper writers or whoever, when, when, when there's chirps like that and people are calling for this guy's head and that guy's head, it, what impact, if any at all, does that have on a clubhouse, on an organization? No, I don't think it. I don't think it bothers the players. I, I really don't. I think it. Uh, you know, nobody likes to hear that. You know, we can all say we don't listen to those things and we don't read the paper, but we do read the paper. We don't necessarily listen to those because we're working when that stuff's going on a lot. But somebody tells you about it, you know, if somebody's on you and they're on you hard. And you know what's going on and. As an individual, you certainly don't feel good about it, but I don't think it affects the players. It doesn't affect the way you go about your job. Hey, you know, we're open season on criticism. When you're a professional coach or a manager, and that's the way it should be. You want your fans interested. You know, and if they have opinions and everything, that's fine. As long as they're fair, I think that's very, very fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. I think it's good. I think it's healthy. I feel like they're part of the team. Well, Jim, but, one of your uh, think, former players, Joel Zumaya, who's actually one of my favorite players, the last professional jersey I've ever bought, he, he's been going nuts on social media, and he came out with a post today talking about canning people, starting with Al Avila, and then he ends it with, P.S., if you're going to have a players-only closed-door meeting and not have anyone get heated during the conversation, then obviously no one cares enough to change. Do you know how many of these meetings th took place during the 2006 season? We had plenty of them, and I'm going to say all of them were very exciting. Have Half of them, Jim Leland comes in storming through the doors like an angry troll ripping our asses. Do you think that's what the Tigers need right now? An angry troll to rip their asses? 
No, I don't. I think <laughs> that uh, I think Joe's a little bit out of line on some of his comments. Uh, he's certainly entitled to those comments, but uh, you know this. When you're management, you know you're you're either the beneficiary or the victim of your players' performance. And right now, a lot of good players that we have. This is not a criticism. This is a fact. A lot of the good players we have are not performing up to their capabilities. And if they don't, we will not win. And they will call, be calling for somebody's head. I, I, I get that. But I think every once in a while you got to say, hey, you know, the game belongs to the players. So when, right. you, when you do good, you give the credit to the players. And when you don't do good, you put it on your shoulders that you have to do a better job of managing or whatever it may be. I understand all that, but the, at the end of the day, we got very talented players that up to this point have not performed to their capabilities or the history of their career. I think they will, and when they do, I think we can take off, but if they don't do that, we're in trouble. Hey, Jim, I want to ask you about Spencer Torkelson. Do you think he could use a stint in the minors? I mean, the first guy that I, that I think of is Max Scherzer, is a guy who went down there for a couple of weeks, and, and you know, he's a freaking Hall of Famer, Max Scherzer. Do you think Torkelson could use a couple of weeks in the uh, minors to get his head straight? Confidence that would be a better back? question for AJ. Yeah. I mean, that would be a better question yeah. for AJ. I think uh, my personal opinion is that uh, it would not hurt him. I don't think it's necessarily something that you have to do, but I do not think it would hurt him to go down and get some at bats. He's getting a lot of at bats to the big leagues. He's been in a little fun. But I, if there's anything that I've ever been sure of, Spencer Torkerson is going to be a star in this league at some point. He has really got a solid foundation for hitting. He's a little off now. He's not getting the ball in the air quite as much as maybe he has in the past. It may be a little bit of minor league career and certainly uh, in college. So I think that'll all count. This guy is going to be a star, and there's very few guys that go up that big league as a rookie. There's a lot of rookies that are struggling this year. You just don't go up to that league and tear it up, particularly the way they use their pitching nowadays. The starter's only in there for maybe one or two times around at the most. You're seeing a bunch of different relievers come in. It's very difficult right now to hit in the big leagues because you're not seeing the same guy very often, and everybody's coming out of the bullpen pretty much so in 96, 97. Look at the Tiger bullpen. It's one of the best in all of baseball. So – I think I think he's fine. I don't think it would hurt him to send him down, but I don't necessarily think that you have to send him down. Jim, Tom Mazaway, thanks a million for coming on. You never say no to me. We appreciate it. Uh, miss our days at Hazel Park Raceway. Miss that place. More than you know, I miss that place. But uh, I'll tell you, a, a guy they miss, and no one's even talking about him anymore, is – it's Akil Badu, and I, I, I feel for that kid. I mean, that guy was a spark plug last year. He came up here like a shooting star, and he's disappeared. And I feel, uh, I don't know what the hell happened uh, to that guy. Can you explain what happens to a player like that? And do you think he could regain uh, what he had last year? Yeah, I think he's a very talented player. I think he'll be back at some point. He had some, a little bit of an injury problem down at Toledo. Uh, but I think he'll be back at some point. I still think he has a chance to be a very, very solid major league player. Uh, stuff happened fast for him last year. Uh, it was kind of an unbelievable story. I've never seen anything like it. No. Some kid had only played Nate and come up and tear the big leagues up. I think he hit 14 home runs. Yeah. I mean, that's unheard of. Uh, it was just unbelievable. So I definitely think he'll be back. I think he's a good player. He's strong. He can run. Uh, yeah, I think he's, he's got a loud sound in his bat. I think, don't forget about him, I think he'll be back at some point, and I think he's going to end up being a good player. But that, people make hear. adjustments to you, yeah. and then you got to readjust. That's good to hear. That could be huge. And now right, let's go to Riley Green. And well, if the, When this kid finally comes up, it's going to be a lot of pressure on him here, for, especially if he comes up here and is the player that everyone expects him to be. And that kid in Baltimore, Raishman, this is his first home run. Uh, yesterday, last night, as a matter of fact. Now, Riley Green is the number one prospect. He comes up here. If he starts hitting, he can he can maybe be that kid here that maybe everyone else can get on board. But it's a kid. I don't, I don't know. How does, that, how does that work? Is it too much pressure for this guy? I don't think so much it's the pressure. I just think that you, it's a maturing process. And Riley Green is going to be a outstanding major league player for a long time. I think he'll be an all-star player at some point. But you got to remember, Riley Green has, has, hasn't really played Triple A that much, right? And so 
I mean, he's just a baby out of high school, a couple, two or three years. So, I mean, don't expect Riley Green to come up there and carry the Tigers. That's not going to happen. He's going to he's going to do fine. He's going to have some really nice days. He's going to have some really tough days until he gets settled in. Him and Torkelson are both in the same boat, in my opinion. Even Badu has to readjust a little bit. So those three guys are the real deal. And this green kid is, is really a good, good-looking player. But, you know, I think – we're asking too much if we, you know, we're, we're waiting Riley Green to come to the big leagues, and I think that's wonderful, and it's exciting. But don't be disappointed if he just doesn't tear it up right away. That's right. not going to happen. And one last one from me. Tarek Skubal has come up here and done wonderful things. Who who does he remind you of, and what do you think he can give the Tigers going down the line? Well, he doesn't remind me of anybody. I like each player to have his own identity. Yeah. I, I really like Skubal. I thought he has great delivery. The delivery does remember, remind me a little bit of Kofax delivery, to wow, be honest with you. Wow. But that's that's delivery. I'm certainly not comparing him <laughs> to Kofax. But <laughs> this kid's a real deal. There's no question about it. He's a real deal. He's got a good feel for pitching. He has outstanding stuff. He's got that extra gear if he needs to tune it up or turn it up. So, uh, yeah, he's the real deal. Uh, you know, we'd love to have a couple more like him. And that was just a great that was just a great job on the amateur scouts part. They got him in the 12th round out of yep. Seattle somewhere. And, I mean, just a terrific, terrific scouting job. Hey, Jim, we can't thank you enough for your time. I do have one final two-part question. Uh, number one, you have okay. you have managed some of the best players in the history of this game. Barry Bonds, Miguel Cabrera, Justin Verlander. Max Scherzer. Max Scherzer <laughs> uh, uh, Maz uh, sneaks out. A, do you believe Barry Bonds should be in the Hall of Fame? And two... And, and I know you're, you're probably not going to talk about yourself, but you, too, belong in the Hall of Fame. Do you expect to get that call? What would that call mean to you uh, if you got that in January? Well, that would be, you know, that would be great, obviously. But, uh, you know, I leave that to somebody else. You know, I think you could make a case for me. You could probably make a case not for me. But I'll leave that to somebody else. That's really, you know, it would be wonderful to happen. But. My career is what it is. You know, I'm going to go on uh, regardless whether I get in or not. So I think, uh, you know, it, it's just what it is. You're, you're at the mercy of voters, and we'll see what happens. But I definitely think Barry Bonds belongs in the Hall of Fame. And I think, to be honest with you, even the people that vote against Barry Bonds, I think they believe that he belongs in the Hall of Fame. But because of their suspicions, uh, they're not putting him in. But I don't think it means that they don't think he's a Hall of Fame player. I think most everybody has to think Barry Bonds is a Hall of Fame player. But because of some suspicions, some people are not going to vote for him. And certainly that's their right. Uh, that's their privilege. It's a privilege to vote for the Hall of Fame. And they have the right to vote uh, however they see fit. Jim, one last thing on Barry Bonds. Can you just go over that tirade you did in <laughs> Pittsburgh at spring training <laughs> one more best. time with us, please? Well, that was kind of my benchmark in Pittsburgh, and I'm not very proud of that, to be honest with you, because it was just a misunderstanding with uh, Bill Verdon, and I got involved, and it was kind of a misunderstanding. We talked about it. We laugh about it now. More people make more stuff of that than we do. We kind of laugh about it now, but it was just a misunderstanding, and, you know, it happened at the wrong time, and, you you, you know, it just uh, it just caught me and caught him a little bit, and uh, but, you know, it really wasn't as big a deal as it seemed to be, other than the fact that, you know, I wish it would have never been on TV, but that was my fault. The TVs were there. You know they're there, but I wasn't thinking about it. I snapped, and he snapped, and, hey, hopefully that's just two big boys having a disagreement, and that's the way I look at it. Us baseball fans loved it, though. Yeah, absolutely loved it, and I know we asked you earlier about coaching again. Uh, even if it's – I'm not specifically talking about Detroit, but you said you didn't like it because of the travel. Would you ever take a GM role? No, no, I'm I'm done. I'm done. I, just, I like what I'm doing. I go to spring training. I see all the games. I evaluate the club and give an opinion if AJ or Al ask it. I go to see. I was just in Toledo watching our AAA club. I'm going to Erie next week. Uh, I really like that. I come up to Detroit for some functions once in a while, but I pretty much stay away. It's not my show anymore. I don't want to hang around. I don't want to be one of those guys that hangs around. So uh, I'm very happy doing what I'm doing. And uh still enjoy working for the Tigers as well as doing a little work for the commissioner. Well, we're going to – hopefully we get that Hall of Fame call in uh, January, Jim. You certainly deserve it. And 
And those writers, man, I tell you, <laughs> we're at their mercy for a lot of things, aren't we? Uh, There's J something. Well, well, <laughs> they got a job to do, a lot of responsibility, and I'm sure they'll 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 make a choice that they feel is right, and that's fair enough to me. Amen to that, Jim Leland. We cannot thank you enough for your time, sir. Thank you so much. You got it. All right, the great you, Jim. Jim Leland.